Welcome to the second session of this year's What's New in 2015 for SOLIDWORKS. So in this section we're going to talk about how we can reduce operational costs. So we're going to run through how we can calculate product costs as you design, create detailed manufacturing information, improve understanding of your design intent, and how we can integrate electrical systems up front. So the first area we're going to focus on is SOLIDWORKS costing. So if we switch over to SOLIDWORKS and take a look, with costing in 2015 we've now seen the support added for weldment structural members. So this is something that previously couldn't, been, uh, couldn't be done before. But now what you'll see is over on the left hand side that we have a structural bodies folder which contains the structural members within them. And if we take a look at one of these individually we can start to understand how a cost is built up for these. So we can still specify our material uh, at the top end and a material cost, but when we look at the stock body folder, it's now going to pick up the standard profile and size directly from the structural member tool that was used to create it. What it will then do is take a cost uh, per unit length and apply that to our model. Now there's two ways that you can cost structural members in costing. We can choose a cost per length, which will just use the unit length of the structural member, or alternatively we can say we buy it in stock lengths uh, and then it will account for that total stock length in its cost calculation. What we'll find though is that the scrap value increases quite considerably with that type of costing uh, simply because it, the system isn't aware of any optimization or things like that that it can use. If we take a look over on the left hand side there's a number of setup costs added to the system but it will also account for end cut operations on plain structural members. If you do have any holes or cut out features within them it will also add those into, uh, into a folder as well. <clears throat> it may be that you actually don't cut two ends, you leave uh, the end that comes in on the stock length uh, as it is so we can actually apply a no cost to one of those end cuts to get a more accurate uh, view of, of how much that body costs. You'll see just further down the tree we get a sheet metal bodies folder as we'd have before. Any gussets or end caps will go into the general bodies folder and we also now support costs for welding as well so if you have defined welds within your system we can calculate costs for those as well. Okay if we just switch over to Another part now, we've got a casting uh, on the screen here that we want to take a look at some costs for. And what we find now is towards the top end of the system we can now specify casting as a particular method that we want to cost by. So again the process is very similar, we'd need to choose a material that we're using and the certain costs assigned to those materials. But when we're doing casting we can now include the cycle time, uh, mould cost and any waste material uh, that's included uh, within that. So we can start to calculate quite a wide range of factors within here. The really nice thing is we can obviously come in here and uh, increase the lot number of the parts and start to get an understanding of if we increase our volume production run how much that's going to decrease the part cost. So some quick uh, effective ways that we can look at the costing there for cast components. The same is true for plastic components as well, so we can use a, a very similar system for plastic components where we can take into account cycle time, mould cost and wastage. This particular file uh, needs some machining operations applied to it, so I'm just going to switch over to the machined configuration just to talk about another update that we have uh, within costing. So when we're doing machining operations here we get the ability to choose a stock body that we want to use to cost. So here you'll see the temporary graphics displaying uh, the body that we're going to cost uh, as designated by this block. But within here we can actually drop that down now and choose to use a custom uh, stock body. And what that's really useful for here is, so we could say in this particular example that we want to use the stock body uh, for the casting that we just looked at. So that's a configuration within this file which we can pick. Alternatively you can use a reference part if it's in a separate part file. And what you'll see here is that the saved cost information for that particular item can be brought through and used as the base cost for the machining. So now if we update this component we're getting a much more reflective view of the costs uh, involved in the casting process and the machining process. 
So just finally, there is also support for 3D printing within here. So we can define some machines within our templates. Uh, we can also choose the positional information for the bed display, things like that, and also what the uh, what the fill rate is on the components as well, and whether we're including any uh, raft into that system, so any support material. Okay, so we've seen that we can now cost weldments and welds, and we can choose to use a per length or stock body option within there. We now have the ability to cast uh, to cost cast components. Uh, also we can use the cast components as the base cost for any machined parts. We can now cost for 3D printed designs and also for plastic injection moulded designs as well. Okay, Alex is going to run us through SolidWorks Electrical now.